Okay, we're going to do our first line integral example here. All right, so we are asked to evaluate a function along a curve with the arc length differential with this function. And our curve, in this case, is the line segment from 431 to 0, 1, 1. So we're just going to evaluate this line integral directly. The first thing to remember for all of these line integrals is that you need to, first of all, have a parameterization of the curve. And you're basically going to convert all of this to be in terms of t. So I need to start with a parameterization of this line segment from 431 to 0, 1, 1. And the direction that you go along the curve is important. So we did line segments a long time ago, and we've reviewed them a little bit since we first did them. Um, but I need to write parametric equations for this line. Sometimes you have parametric equations for the curve given to you, but here I don't. Uh, and I need my initial point. So it's important which point I use for my initial point here. Going from 431 to 011. So my initial point would be 431. And then I will have plus, and then the coefficient of the t term will be the components of a vector that go from our initial point to our terminal point. So the x will decrease by 4. So this will be plus negative 4 t or minus 4 t. And then for the y, the y values decrease by 2. So I'll have plus negative 2 t or minus 2 t. And for the z, that doesn't change, so I can put plus 0 t, or I can just leave this z equals 1. I can put plus 0 t here if I want. Uh, and then the other important thing here is that it's not the entire line. It's a line segment from this point to this point. So if we use the vector that goes between these two points, then your t interval will always go from 0 to 1. We did these at the very beginning of the semester, but now is when you're going to need to use those for doing your line integrals. Um, okay, so I need parameterization in my line segment. Anytime you're doing a line integral, you're going to be converting everything in there to t values so that you're really going to actually be evaluating the line integral in terms of t. Um, so I'm going to integrate over this curve. So my limits of integration will be those t values from t equals 0 to 1. And what I'm going to integrate is this function, f given by x squared plus y minus 4z. But remember that I need to do my line integral in terms of t values. So I'm using x squared plus y minus 4z, but over this curve. So I'm going to use these for my x, y, z. So I'm, what I'm going to get at the end here is the total value of this function along this curve. So f along this curve, the x's will be given by this. That's from my x squared in my function. And then plus y. My y is 3 minus 2t. And then minus 4z. And my z is 1. So we will just have minus 4. OK, so I've said this many times this semester. But uh, it's important that rather than trying to memorize a problem, you really just let the symbols tell you what to do. So I'm integrating over this curve. Here's my curve. I need limits of integration. I'm integrating this function but on this curve. So I'm just putting that in. And then you need to remember what the ds differential is. So ds is an arc length differential. We did that a long time ago, arc length differential. But the important thing about that arc length differential, I don't just rewrite that as dt. That arc length differential is the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared plus dz dt squared. So this part here, this ds differential, is this arc length that we did a long time ago back in chapter 13. All right, so my dx dt, that's going to come from here. If this is my x, then dx dt will be the derivative of this with respect to t, so negative 4. And again, that's from my dx dt plus dy dt, so that will be negative 2, the quantity squared, plus dz dt. And dz dt will be 0 here, since z is a constant function. 
So that's that arc length that we did way back in chapter 13, coming back again here. Also in the theorems in this chapter, uh, it talks to you about how the ds differential can be rewritten in this form, dt. Okay, from here it's essentially a calc 1 problem. So from here it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I might skip some steps here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this integration. Uh, there's different ways that you might choose to do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this as the quantity squared instead of expanding that all out and do a little u substitution with that integration. Here I'm going to go ahead and combine my 3 and my negative 4 to make that minus 1 minus 2t. That's the function I'm going to integrate. In this case, my ds differential ends up all being a constant. All of this ends up simplifying to a constant on this problem. That won't always happen. But since this is all a constant, I'm going to just simplify that and pull that out front of my integral. So I will have uh, 16 plus 4, so 20, square root of 20, or 2 square root of 5, if you would like to simplify that. And then my dt here at the end. Okay, so now I just need to do this integration, plug in my limits of integration. Um, I'm just going to do a u substitution here where I would let u equal what's inside this square and then think about my du. I'll get an extra negative 4 for my du, so I'll have a negative 1 fourth here. So I'll have a negative 1 fourth times a 1 third. So negative 1 twelfth times 4 minus 4t, the quantity cubed. I'm not u substitution integrating that. And then minus t and minus t squared. And I'm going to evaluate from 0 to 1. Um, all right, so when I put in 1, this whole expression here will be 0. I'll have 4 minus 4 times 1, so that'll be 4 minus 4. That'll all be 0 there. Uh, so I'll just have negative 1 minus 1 squared will be another minus 1. And then minus 2 square root of 5 times when I put in 0. Here I'll have um, 4 cubed, so 64 times the negative 1 twelfth out front will be negative 16 thirds. And then when I put in 0, both of these terms will be 0. Uh, so we can go ahead and simplify that here. We'll have a negative 2 times 2 square root of 5, so negative 4 square root of 5 plus 32 square root of 5 over 3. And if you want to get a common denominator here, it would be 3, so negative 12 square root of 5 over 3 plus 32 square root of 5 over 3 would be 20 square root of 5 over 3. All right, so what that number represents is the total value of this function over this curve. We'll look at some application problems later in the chapter that have to do with density and things like that. Uh, lots of other applications too, um, many of them to do with physics applications uh, that have to do with looking at the total value of a function along a curve. All right, we'll look at one more example for a line integral where the function that we start with is a little bit more complicated and the curve that we start with is a little bit more complicated. So writing the parametric equations for the curve takes a little bit more thought on this next example.